Bloodborne, I've recently beaten it. Dear, oh dear. What was it? The hunt? The blood? Or the horrible dream? One more hit. And this will end, old man. When will you learn your lesson? What, what, what? what is this? <laughs> uh oh. You were underestimating humans, were you? But I'm not a mere human anymore. I am the hunter. Sadly, I couldn't play the DLC, but I've heard Max has a great review slash summary of the game. So let's check it out. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I kind of kind of had to look at like you know video descriptions and lore explanations by Vati video after I beat it. <laughs> the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it <laughs> anti-baby <laughs> gets worse in this game. You I feel like it's very pro-baby. You kind of have to consume them, you know. That's a snack play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign language, and stricken with Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London, seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In very, very accurate so far. <laughs> doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great... No, it's not a hallucination. The doll wife was real. Journeying further, John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60-year-old man he <laughs> Why is it gay? <laughs> keeps as a pet and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia to accomplish... Actually, when I think about it, you didn't really even kill the baby, right? You killed the wet nurse? ...said Herculean task. The player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth-ridden alleyways of a post-Brexit Britain, slaying monsters, <laughs> expl... <laughs> Living in London simulator. <laughs> Loring and tricking women into being impregnated by God so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization yeah, of a... This, this is what happened. This, this, that is kind of what happened, now. Yeah. Metroidvania with something new around every corner. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges. And has a gripping story and lore about discovering... Well, was it gripping though? <laughs> it was interesting, I, I uh, will admit that, but... Honestly, I never really understood too much of this of the lore. I feel like that's a normal from from software um, lore uh, build up for the story. You kind of have to like replay the game like, like several times, doing all the quest lines and everything, and like reading all the lore items, and then just kind of you know figure out the rest from there. The Eldritch Truth. So if you can play it yourself, because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest True. using me as genuine advice. Although he is pre uh, like fairly accurate in the summary of whatever he does. However, <laughs> I, I did the same thing when I, when I looked at the doorway. There were like the, all of these spiders. I was like, mm, no, I, 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 I'm gonna opt out. I don't want to go there. Most people can't play this game ever because you have to buy a four hundred dollar. Dude, real facts. I had to like play it over a PlayStation Plus. I don't own a PlayStation Five. That's why I couldn't play it. Uh, couldn't play the DLC. Because the PlayStation Plus service only gives you the base game. And even then it was kind of annoying because it used uh, game cloud streaming or something. Which gave you like a half second to a second delay on your inputs on your game controller. And that is somewhat uh, bad if you have to like, you know, play with reflexes and like really short time frames when dodging or like trying to counter with your Pistol. Magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. <laughs> and even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no anti-aliasing. Port this game to PC, I beg of you. In yes. fact, I can assume that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game. But keep watching because I'm hilarious and original. Do that. <laughs> and keep watching because I am funny, guy. <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. It is just... Based on the entertainment itself, it is worth watching, Maxer. And I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike hey, experience go. that is Bloodborne. The best the gameplay is what makes this game great, and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated. On a simple, I would say, like overall, Bloodborne is really good. 
except for the fact that you kind of have like consumables as bullets and healing items. I'm kind of used to like the Dark Souls and Elden Ring method where it just regenerates when you die or like when you sit at a bonfire. But in Bloodborne, you kind of have to farm the healing items because they just get used and then you have to like get them back by buying or like farming. Level your baby brain is Which is kind of annoying if you have like, you know, if there's a boss you can't like easily defeat. So you try him a couple of times and then you run out of blood vials and like bullets and then you're gonna have to spend half an hour to like farming and getting them back for like just to be able to try the boss a couple more times. Responsible for only two tasks, dodging and but other than that, it's pretty good, pretty good. Hitting and dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Right. Because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Yes. Every encounter, <laughs> therefore, is tense oh, and engaging. God. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On a complicated <laughs> level, you have a gun, and normally bullets hurt people. But in London, bullets are a suggestion, like the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Don't you know, shanking is way more OP in London. Here in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when- And as a hunter, you have a license to shank, just saying. When you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge what? your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out- I mean, you basically made a bullet hole where you can thrust your fist in. Their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate <laughs> like fruit by the foot. Yeah, Side note, yeah, the most yeah. optimal far- Yeah. Just like a visit to the doctor. Coming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I changed the web page. And in this hey route, you sneak up behind this guy hey and yo. do him the dirty. Then entice these two uh, swangler bastards to I be should have done to that. by members of Organization 13. Repeat 50 times. On a complicated level, every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets. And Ooh. transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 attacks. attacks. I rarely use these. On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge are created. <laughs> you know the summaries of like the lore and the story, the gameplay sounds so weird and like <laughs> like he's making fun of it, but it is accurate. You do remember those squiggly lines. By gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry. My favorites are more money, more money, and more money they stack. Same, Finally, same, on a meta-theoretical chiropractic level, every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks. Yeah, that's, there that's are different tool addition. You can like basically mod the weapon the way you like to play, right? Types that can literally change. I just used more attack, <laughs> more attack damage. All of the stats of the weapon, like making a fucking. Sp I was just not sure how much fire damage or like poison and stuff actually do. I tried like one weapon to imbue it with like as much poison as I can, but the poison never really seemed to do anything. They never, it never like seemed like it was actually poisoning the enemy for some reason or do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely more and a lot of strategy in how you level up your character, but I assume that Fair you enough. know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who Duh. are these crusty abominations that- Also, I'm not sure. I kind of don't mind that you can't reset the, the stats, but it also at the same time feels a bit annoying, right? Because then you have to make a new character. If you like, just want to try the arcane path or something, or like bullets. Like the what's it called? Blood blood shot or whatever. Like, uh, do I really want to like make a whole ass new character playing the game for like another thirty hours just to try out a build that might just be as good or even as good? It's like just hitting it with strength. You're fighting on screen. Well, to learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So lore. buckle your britches, so bitches, deep. because this shit is wild. If I say something no. questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education <laughs> extremely seriously because they found yeah. woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also I mean... <laughs> Again, it sounds stupid, but it's kind of accurate. So because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got... Fear the old blood. Got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns <laughs> out the blood can heal people, which is really good due to all the knife crap. 
Again, yeah. <laughs> kind of what they did. The, uh, the Church of the Healing Blood, damn. Prime. So everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals, but it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf. So the church hires a guy named German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters, but there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife crime has increased even more and German. <laughs> did he just get up? <laughs> German sort of. Well, I, I, though, to be fair. Everybody has the blood, so everybody turns into a beast. So it's kind of becoming more like a cleansing than a problem solving. Goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall Amazonian. He also canonically has sex with it. The moon god for some reason. <laughs> I mean, if you're alone in a house somewhere, might as well have a doll, right? Kind of takes notice of this and it's like, all right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring Damn. your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. <laughs> Who wouldn't think that's a great deal? <laughs> My own life, doll, damn. This is where you come in. See, the moon god, assassin... Yeah, never really got where I came in from. Because, I, like, when you start the game, you're just kind of, like, there. And then you start as a hunter. ...nates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it, since oh, he's confined okay. to the ninth sure. dimension. So, in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation. So, comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest <laughs> of us non-chills... No, please don't do that. <laughs> ...we have ample... Well, then again, it might be interesting to read. Time to explain more of what makes this game great. Prepare to yes, die. You have been jinxed. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games... I think overall I did pretty good. I didn't die too much. But I kind of had experience playing all the Souls games. I think the only one that I haven't played yet is Demon Souls. Which again is a PlayStation exclusive, which... Uh... Not sure when I'm gonna play that. Games bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will challenge your skill <laughs> quite the same way. Except dick for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, who were placed into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it. But it's hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building-sized deer demon. So yeah, yeah, I would be that's impressed. That's kind of like my experience. <laughs> I don't like like big boss fights. The main problem with that is you're kind of fighting the camera, and sometimes you can't even tell what the boss does. And the big ass area attacks just by swiping their hand. He killed that. But not only that, unlike Dark Souls, every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large beasts can have their really? bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky. Bone oh, boys can yeah. be knocked over and have their marrow shipped. And human enemies will win some recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every <laughs> boss punishes you for- Oh no, I small fanboy. <laughs> Cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. True, Unless true. you're, I kind of had to get like accustomed to just um, basically dodge towards them instead of trying to go away because most enemies have some kind of like. I don't know, charge attack or like jumping attack where they just close the gap. Fighting Rom, who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches so we really don't talk about him. Fight. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, <laughs> let me tell you something, the humanoid yeah. bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But me Luckily for me though, I kind of beat him in like my second try, so I didn't get too annoyed by him, but I just... <laughs> I was like playing this like in stream and everybody was like, no, make a lash. No. <laughs> they hated him. The lash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him oh, and his yes. direction depends on RNG. Dude, I was like already annoyed and I only fought him like twice. Making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack <laughs> and then chase him again where he gains yeah. the power to insta kill yeah. you. God forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. I guess I just kind of got lucky killing in the second try. Here's a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole. Oh yeah, I did this actually. I was like, oh, there he is. I'm going to throw a Molotov. And then threw a Molotov and he didn't run away. And I was like, what? Hang on a minute. <laughs> I threw all my Molotovs and all my poison knives. And then I followed him to the boss fight and hit him like twice or something. 
and then he died. Poison him repeatedly and watch him spaz the fuck out until yeah. death. You will yeah. thank me. But as a result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play. And their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. But that isn't most of the time in the I guess that is true. I have kind of didn't like the fact that a lot of bosses kill you in like two or three hits, which was kind of felt a bit... Felt like I was a bit too weak, maybe, or something. But I guess on the other hand, if you like actually defeat them, it's like a testament that you've grown in skill, that you outmatch them in a way. The game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson one in area design. Where the fuck am I going? Exploration <laughs> is the name of the game, except it's yeah. called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time, because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about Shank killing em. them. The plague of beasts infecting London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive <laughs> at <laughs> Standard English teeth healthcare right, and slurs your speech. <laughs> so it's up to you to stop them as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used to it. This game. I did get lost a lot. But at some point, I just kind of got used to it, I guess. <laughs> I wasn't really looking up where to go. Game doesn't do X Although, then again, chat helped me quite a lot with like telling me where to go. Exploration, like, oh look, there's loot in this hallway. My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration where you find a route <laughs> back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. And I hope you weren't expecting yeah, a mini map like a... or any map. Every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral War- Was actually really cool opening a lot of shortcuts. Gotta, gotta admit that. It's like, there weren't a lot of lamps, but there were a lot of shortcut doors and elevators and stuff. Is a level. Which was it's like always cool, right? You, had, you open a shotgun and then you're like, what? I'm back here? Oh my god. <laughs> well, but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. Cool. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture Hall. And no, it does not <laughs> connect to the altar of this. I've always said school is a nightmare. Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the lecture hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. <laughs> the game also has two yep. completely secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its combat, oh, yeah. because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. <laughs> Stealing currency Sucking you. gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that from software hates us all since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the field of corn in ohio and trek down what? waldo but it's worth what? it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle so that she may feel the wrath of the proletariat all we have to do is kill prince philip who guards the way as an eternal <laughs> lich on oh my god <laughs> Why did I make that collection? <laughs> On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series yeah, of okay. interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusion. Actually, what happened to the cannibal? I think I sent him to the clinic, but then I kind of never saw him again. Oh, is he the guy? The blue little smurf guy who's not attacking you? Did the clinic turn him into a smurf? ...to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help it. <laughs> the nice woman. <laughs> ...and assist others. Then take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the blue man group. And if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. Yeah. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, and femboy fishing the scariest of them all i'm oh is that the dlc damn I wish I could have played that. Of course, talking about the DLC, the only yeah. DLC for this game. And if you play through Bloodborne, you have to play through the DLC. No! Do I need to buy a PlayStation? Do I need to buy a PlayStation? I probably have to buy a PlayStation. Maybe in 10 years when I made it big on YouTube. <laughs> See, I'm not giving you a fucking choice. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since Spore Galactic Adventures. Jung jungles. Come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old secrets. hunters. Tell me the secrets, the old hunters.
I want oh. you to spoiler territory. I haven't seen this point. To imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by HP Lovecraft. It would be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that. This is where you evolve from John Bloodborne to Doom Bloodborne. Except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. Damn. They experimented <laughs> on an entire village and possibly beat up a god. I feel like they did this like on every village though, right? Old Yardim and other places. I forgot the other places. Out of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent Damn. an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, <laughs> in the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity. In I mean, they're just doing their job. <laughs> Distinguishable from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because Damn. he's bad, but because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is oh. not actually a real corral. But like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not... <laughs> Amazing reward. <laughs> he becomes even harder. <laughs> going to lie. This DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any oh, video game. Dude, good thing I don't have the DLC. This <laughs> I might have raged quit. Ever. So your ass will be clenched the entire time. And the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh. But like this boss, yeah, you yeah. are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges. And I believe in your ability to beat both of them, King. Boss lightning round. Boss lightning round. Uh oh. Let's see who are the hardest bosses in the game. The DLC has many such cases of amazing yeah, bosses, alive. including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight foot tall doll fetish, but we'll get back to that. And Orphan of. Wait. He made a doll out of a hunter? Kind of kinky. Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being. If you beat Bloodborne, aren't you like also born by killing a god? beaten to death with a sharpened placenta this is the fight for you and as <laughs> a sharpened placenta <laughs> the strongest weapon in the game with everything that from software makes they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day i'm of course talking about lawrence which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell take my advice don't fight lawrence you only lose a part of yourself since this boss fights you yeah. by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere oh, i've always no. wanted my Already sounds very annoying. Game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. <laughs> to wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. I don't know what okay. it is about Japanese composers being able to make better <laughs> symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take, da, da, da. take a listen. Holy shit, I'm in a line. <laughs> Have you ever thought, as I do, that this game is just too good? That you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game? Such as the- Isn't there like one? Like a- uh, um like an 8-bit version of Bloodborne or something? The engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. I, of course, jest. They're fine, probably, except for half of them, because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation for all of those who Ooh. wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. I kind of just assumed they were for like leveling or like farming or something. Let's talk about how and more importantly, why. First of all, Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is <laughs> mandatory. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemies. I kind of stopped doing the dungeons uh, after level two or something. Like the dungeon levels, that, that was like five levels for the dungeons, I think. I did like the first two on like the ones I found, and then I kind of just stopped doing them. <laughs> Encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki, but I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice Dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath, so you instead <laughs> fight SCP-96. But why oh, no. are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called oh, the Sumerians who okay. discovered <laughs> the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder 
wonder what well. happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons yeah. can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The Chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers <laughs> use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite <laughs> is the man. I kind of stopped doing them because at some point they became less about farming blood vials and instead were like using up all my blood vials and then I was like, ah, I kind of don't see the point on doing them anymore. And who aggressively rolls at you, stark naked, wearing only his Nikes. Such the unique a weird this also enemy. extends <laughs> to the bosses and they're actually pretty cool, like two Marian descendant, watchdog, and the three overweight men. Oh, when you... I mean, think about it, yeah, they had like different bosses that weren't in the main game. And do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from yeah. throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that- Honestly, I didn't mind too much because it was like replayable content. So naturally, they're just gonna put in bosses that you've already seen or before. Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want <laughs> Miklash is not back, 10 out of 10. <laughs> to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I beat Sekiro backwards on a keyboard and this shit is too fucking much. Now normally that would be Damn. all, but the duck I never had too much trouble against the fire dog, I think. Granted I was like playing the, the lower level lower difficulty dungeons, so Maybe he goes even harder. Dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface, and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. What? These places you must never venture, for they what? are the save edit dungeons. Whereby, save through it. wizardry, the community are able to conjure up deep, dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Damn. Of these secrets, there are Oh, I think I heard about this. Like, somebody modded, like, um excluded game stuff or something and put back dungeons that the developers didn't include only two that i shall reveal to you and the first is the cum dungeon yes what? you heard that correctly and clearly the cum <laughs> dungeon is the name of the most optimal farming route ever really? conceived by the fucking cricket people who do this shit whereby the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high level boss yeets itself off a cliff murgo's okay. pink fisting route can give you ten thousand echoes this gives eighty three thousand and if you thought that that sorcery was bad it gets it's much worse. You can I need, insert I anything that from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon. Anything. This includes cut and unfinished what? content from the game that the developers forgot to delete. Like this <laughs> doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, Ow, the chalice dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow... Yeah, it's like just playable content. I mean, it's just an addition to a good game, so I didn't mind them too much, I guess. I was to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now, before we sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? Right. That Ow. I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but what? it's dead. If this game oh. releases on PC and it better, then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively. And I mean, that just happens with like from software games. As soon as like a new game comes out, everybody focus on that. So I, I think there's like only hardcore players in like Dark Souls 1, 2, and f maybe 3. 3 might be in like still a little bit played. But I feel like most people are like in Elden Ring now. Fine. If even, right? The game's out so long, probably nobody's plays it anymore. Finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about The Hunter's Dream. After all the combat, the battles, and the difficulty of this game, yeah. it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold fight? his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, true, and true. German says you're a allowed to have sex with her when i fell down and felt defeated and we did all of us don't even lie <laughs> she was there to pick me up when i emoted at her randomly she pretended to be impressed and she was there <laughs> just like mommy ah <laughs> oh, damn i couldn't i couldn't use emotes for some reason i think maybe because i used an xbox controller instead of a playstation one Satch. Satch. i had to look at Rule 34 picks to see how she emotes. Graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game is yes. perfect and complete because yes. she is in it. Now yes. excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should Elf. you get the game? <laughs> <clears throat>
we all did. We all did. Yes, absolutely. I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. Yes. I will be right there. I mean, I, I, I don't incite violence. They're with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. <laughs> if you would like hey, to yo, contribute what? your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the yes. kind denizens of the Mythbuster Smut Discord who sent me what? half the memes in this video. No. And as always, thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. Peace about Maxer. And enjoy your day, I think. <laughs>